Today I'm gonna to show you how to give your out. Today I'm gonna to show you how to give your lens. Today we're making your landscape photos amazing in Photoshop. Hey there, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on flurn.com where we make learning fun. In today's video, we've got a landscape photo from my buddy Andrew. It goes by Andrew Optics on Instagram. You guys should totally follow him because he's an amazing photographer. Recently, I was out in San Francisco shooting with a bunch of people in the Bay Area and Andrew sent over some of his raw photographs that he captured recently. So we get to work on a raw photo and you guys get to download this raw image and follow along. Just click on the link right down below. So we're bringing this raw photo directly into Photoshop, which means we have to go into Adobe Camera Raw first. We'll talk about that in just a minute. In this episode, you're gonna learn how to dodge and burn to give different areas of your photograph a little bit more impact. You're gonna learn how to enhance lighting and even add more definition to a sky. We'll show you how to recover shadow information and bring up the overall vibrance of your photo, giving it a little bit more life. All of this done with a raw image. We got a great tutorial. Let's jump into Photoshop. So the first thing we're gonna do is drag our image right into Photoshop. This is a raw DNG. And here we see, because it's a raw photograph, you have to go through Adobe Camera Raw first. This is always the first step to getting this into Photoshop. And this is where we're gonna hang out for the majority of today because there's so much power built into Adobe Camera Raw. I wanna show you guys how you can utilize some of these tools to make your images better. So if you wanna follow along with this tutorial, you can download it, just follow the link right down below. So just kind of like looking around, it's a great image to start with, but here in the foreground, I want them to be a little bit lighter. I want a little bit more contrast there. So normally when you go to edit a raw photo, you could just things like your exposure, contrast, and things like that. But where I find these tools to be very powerful is to edit just specific areas of your image. So I'm gonna grab my adjustment brush right here, which basically allows me to paint in certain areas of my photo. Now you can use your open and close bracket to make your brush larger and smaller. And if I scroll down over here, we can see we have brush controls, much like the brush controls in Photoshop. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring up my feathering, which basically just makes a soft edge brush. Let's bring that all the way up. And now I wanna bring my flow way down. And this is gonna help me just create a more natural effect. Let's show you what it looks like when the flow is all the way up. So let's start off by bringing up our exposure a little bit. And if I paint on this area, you can see my flow being all the way up. It's kind of like an off and on, right? It's like, it's off and then you paint and then it's 100% on, which isn't exactly what we want. You want a little bit more control over what actually gets the effect. So I recommend bringing your flow way down, somewhere around five. This way you can see if I want an area to have more effect, I can simply paint over this area a little bit more. Like literally, I'm just using a mouse here. I'm just covering over the area each time. And as I go over an area more and more and more, it just builds up this effect and it allows me to create a very natural looking uh, lightening, you know, dodging and burning and general edit. Whereas before, you know, when your flow is relatively high, it just kind of looks like a little bit more of a blunt, like boom, let's just make this whole area brighter. There we go. So I'm kind of focusing on these white waves here because these are really just so, so beautiful and a good place to, just brighten up a little bit. Now, I painted a little bit too much here. You can hold Alt or Option, okay? And that just brings your to your eraser, okay? You can also just click on Erase. And then you also have tools like your size, okay? You can feather and flow your eraser tools. So I'm just gonna erase it away from there a little bit, okay? And just go back to Add and then paint it on here just a little bit. All right. So you can see how much control I have there. Now, the fantastic thing about this tool is the fact that I can take my exposure now and change it because what I did with my painting is just telling it where to be visible. So I can always get back here and change my exposure. The next thing I wanna focus on are these lights. I wanna make them a little bit brighter and I wanna like, I want the glow to be a little bit more warm. So I'm gonna add some yellows, maybe a little bit magenta. So let's go here to our new adjustment brush, okay? Now, as I create adjustment brush, let's go ahead and just click right over here. I'm gonna bring my flow up a little bit because I do want this to kind of just like show up wherever I paint. There we go, I'm gonna just click twice. So each one of these gets about the same level. Fantastic, and you can see I'm just kind of clicking on each of one of these and 
There we go. I'm just gonna click a bunch right there. Hey, look at all those lights. That's so fun. Uh, <laughs> there we go. Now, I've got all these lights setting. I can change the exposure. Look at this. It's like I'm turning lights off and on. And in this case, I want to warm them up because you can see how they're that nice orange color. So I'm going to take my temperature here. We're going to warm it up and give it a little bit of magenta too. There we go. And now it's like, look at that. I'm like turning on these lights at night, which is so, so cool. So what happens? Let's just say I go back to my hand tool. Okay. And I'm ready to like work with my image as a whole. Cause if you click on your hand tool and you start adjusting your exposure, for instance, this is going to work on the whole photo. Okay. So we're, let's go back to our adjustment brush. Cause let's say, ah, oh, you know what? I want to make some adjustments to those lights. So all you have to do is click back on your adjustment brush. And then you have these little pins here. You see these little pins that tells you where you actually edited. Okay. And if you don't see that, just turn this overlay option off and on. Okay. So if you wanted to go back and like adjust that, just click on the pin, boop, and then you're back added to that. So wherever I paint with this is going to get brighter and a little bit warmer. Okay. So let's go ahead and do this a little bit more. I'm just going to, you know, kind of hit the shore here. There we go. Cause that's, you know, being directly affected by these lights. Right. And I want to do under the bridge a little bit too, cause that's going to be directly affected by those lights. Let's go ahead and do that as well. Okay. So this is already looking really nice. Now, if I want to see the before and after, all you have to do is click right over here to this. It looks like a little Y for your before and after. We can just see the left and the right. So here's the before and the after. We're going to get even more uh, intense here in just a little bit, but you can already see how it's kind of like giving the photograph more impact. We're basically editing the light to look a little bit more painterly because we're actually kind of like painting here in Photoshop. So. Let's go back to our original. We're going to go back to the single view. And now I want to give the sky a little bit more impact. Okay. So we're going to go back to our adjustment brush. This time we're just going to use a new adjust adjustment brush. Let's bring our, uh, the color temperature down to zero. And I'm going to bring my exposure up simply to help me see what I'm doing. Now, in this case, I don't really need my flow to be relatively low. I can just bring it up because I just want to like make sure I paint over the sky. Okay. This is more like, hey, let's just get this done. Fantastic. Okay. And look at that. It's pretty dang cool that I was able to just like light in the sky like that. Now I realize I just painted over top of the bridge and the mountains and everything, but that's not a big deal because we're going to use a tool called range masking that basically hides this either in the shadows or the highlights. Now, in this case, because I want my sky to be a little bit more dramatic, I'm going to hide this effect in my shadows making just my highlights in the sky a little bit brighter. So right down here where you see range mask, right now it says none. Okay, this is just going to show up everywhere. Let's go ahead and click on luminance. Okay, and with our luminance range mask, you can actually just turn this on to see like where it's getting affected. That can be helpful. Usually I don't use this, but basically if you ever use blend if in Photoshop, this is very similar. So let's go ahead and take your luminance range and click it from the left to the right. And what this is doing is literally just hiding it from my shadows. Okay. So it's, you can see it's starting to disappear from the darker areas. If you go from the right to the left, okay, it's going to hide it from the highlights and just show up in the shadows, which in this case would be like a little bit of a lower contrast. So I want a higher contrast. We're just going to hide this from the shadows. There we go. Look at that. How cool is this? Now you also have a slider for smoothness and with this one, basically, usually right about in the middle looks pretty good, but you'll just want to adjust this based on your individual image. Okay, so with this range mask, basically, I'm telling this adjustment to only be visible in the highlights. And because I use my brush to just paint over the sky, I'm saying, okay, this adjustment, only visible in the highlights and only visible in the sky. So I'm taking the bright part of the sky and making a little bit lighter, and that's adding more contrast. So let's go ahead and right back up here. We can still edit this. Check this out. I can still change my exposure as much as I want. So we can have a darker sky if we want. We can go as really as bright as we want here. Okay. And you can see it's protecting that information in the shadows. There we go. It's just working with the highlights, which is incredible. Okay. We're looking great. Now, I want to go ahead and bring up the shadow levels in a few places in this photo. Uh, this rock here in the foreground, it's just a little bit dark. I wish I could see a little bit more texture there. So let's click on the new adjustment brush here again. 
Okay, and this time I'm gonna bring my exposure back down to zero and our tint back down to zero. I'm just gonna crank my shadow level way up. Okay, so let's go ahead and paint right over top of here and zoom in. So let's hit this plus item again, and then you can use your space bar to just kind of zoom in. There we go. And as I paint over this area, it's literally just bringing my shadow levels a little bit brighter. Can you see that? There we go. And all of a sudden, I've got an image where I've got all this detail in the shadow. So here's where it was before. I'll just bring my shadows back to where they were before. And we're adding that information. Well, it's there, we just didn't really see it. So I'm pulling it back from the depths. In general, my opinion is if you have something like this where you just really can't see any definition, like try to get that back if you possibly can. Cause it goes from being a black blob to like, oh, there's some crustaceans on the front of this. Cool. Now I kind of want to warm the color temperature up a little bit on this as well. So here we go. You can just take your white balance and bring that right up there as well. It looks fantastic. Now let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit and see if there's any other shadow areas. I kind of like this area being dark. It's pretty cool. Uh, any other shadow areas we want to bring a little bit, uh, to a little bit brighter, maybe under the bridge a little bit. Now keep in mind because I'm adjusting my shadow slider. There we go. Ooh, that's really, that really adjusted that. I want to make sure that this is not, in, not affecting my highlights at all. Okay. So let's go down here to our range mask. I'm going to go to luminance. Okay. And I'm going to say, you know what, really, Hey, we can't be affecting those highlights. This is just for the shadows. Fantastic. All right. Now, even though I used my shadow slider, it was getting some of these bright areas. So I want to make sure that it goes down. Okay. Well, I think everything looks good. I do have a little bit of an area here where I don't really like the effect that I have. So I'm going to click on this brush. Okay. And turn on the mask just to see what area that's being affected. And it looks like I've painted a little bit over top of that area. This is helpful because sometimes it's hard to know like which area you've, you've affected with which brush. So by turning your mask on, you can click here and be like, Oh, okay. That's the sky, you know, click here. And you know, if you haven't done this a ton, like only two points, it should be pretty obvious. But in this case, I was like, okay, that's where that is. So let's go ahead and turn that mask back off. And then I just need to minus this area out. So let's hold alt or option. Okay. That turns my brush into the eraser. All right. And then let's go ahead and erase this out because I want this to kind of be dark right there. That contrast is what makes this really nice. There we go. Fantastic. I think this is looking so, so nice. Now let's go back to our hand tool. Okay. When you go back to your hand tool, that's basically the signal to now I want to edit everything. So for specific areas, you use your adjustment brush, which is right here, your graduated filter or your radial filter. If you want to just edit everything, just go back to your hand tool. So now we've got, I mean, I think the image looks great to be honest. Uh, it was a beautiful image to start with. Uh, we're just going to bring our vibrance up a little bit. Okay, I'm going to bring up our clarity a tiny bit, which basically is like mid-tone contrast. You don't want to go too far. It tends to look uh, just kind of gross. <laughs> For, this is a technical term. All right, there we go. And we'll add a little bit of texture, which is basically like sharpening. All right, fantastic. And at this point, like I really don't feel like I have to go through and adjust my exposure, contrast, highlights, or shadows, because I took care of each of those areas individually. So we're looking really good. At this stage, I always turn the before and after on so I can get an idea of what I've actually done to the photo and see if maybe I can go a little bit farther. So you wanna hit P on your keyboard for preview. So here's the before and the after. I think we're looking really nice. I like that I can see more shadow detail. I like the glow that we've done on the lights. I do think we could use more uh, lightening here in the foreground. So let's go back to this adjustment brush. See how easy this is? Go back to that adjustment brush, click on here again, it's become red. So now we can say, all right, I just wanna bring my feather, sorry, bring my flow down again. Remember we had our flow down, there we go. And now we can start adding a little bit more lightness to this area. Fantastic. So I'm not creating a new adjustment brush at this time. This is the same adjustment, there we go that we had before, we're just adding to this adjustment. All right, 
right? And even over here, I think this could get a little bit brighter too. Nice. So we're just kind of enhancing everything that's already there. Again, because I have this adjustment selected, check this out. I can adjust the exposure and it does everything that I just worked on and everything I selected before. Fantastic, let's go back to the hand tool. Uh, here in our zoom, I can't see my entire image. So I'm gonna click right here and I'm just gonna say fit in view, please. So I can see the whole thing, please. Let's hit P for the before and after. Ah, oh, yeah, there we go. You can see how these bright areas just kind of come to life a little bit more. It's the same photograph, but oh, it just looks like vibrant and vivid now. And we've retained a lot of information, like in our shadows, for instance, here, I can still see all of my highlight detail. It just it really looks like, kind of like we turned the lights on in our photo, which we kind of did up here in the bridge. And that's really, really fun. So at this point, we're ready to bring it into Photoshop. Just click right here on the bottom. This is kind of important. You want your color space to be Adobe RGB 1998. It's a big color space, means you get to work with a bunch of colors, so fantastic. Uh, your bit depth is 16 bit per channel. That's just gonna give you the most information possible to work with, so I suggest that. And then down here, open in Photoshop as smart objects. I feel like that's super important because you wanna be able to get back to your raw editor at any time. And if you don't open it as, as a smart object, you won't be able to. So make sure that's checked and then you hit okay and this should say open object. So let's go ahead and click there. So open object again, puts it into a smart object format and now boop, 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 boop. It's doing all the magic stuff. And then check this out. Now we're in Photoshop. So you can continue to go and make a complete edit here. But if you wanna get back into Adobe Camera Raw, because we open this as a smart object, check this out. Just double click on this thumbnail right here just double click on it, super easy. And we're back into Adobe Camera Raw, okay? I go back to my adjustment brush. I could select the sky, for instance. I can make any changes that I want. Like this is all like using the exact information that we did earlier, right? So I'm not having to redo anything. This is completely non-destructive. I'm going back and, you know, reselecting these highlights if I wanted to, okay? Let's just turn that mask off. And I could, for instance, up my exposure a tiny bit of those if, with those if I wanted to. Okay, I hit okay. It basically calculates all those changes and then brings it back into Photoshop. And from here I could do things like advanced object removal, advanced sharpening. There's many, many different things that we're gonna do. In today's episode, really all we're gonna do to finish this up is a little bit of sharpening. So let's go to filter. There's many ways to sharpen, by the way. We have tons of free episodes on it. Uh, check out this one right up here because I think that's a really nice one. We're just gonna go to filter, down to sharpen, and I'm gonna go to unsharp mask. Now, because this is a smart object too, this unsharp max becomes non-destructive, okay? So we're just gonna bring our amount up, fantastic, and keep our radius relatively low. The higher your radius goes, the more of a kind of weird effect you get. So let's keep our radius relatively low. All right, there we go. Let's hit okay. And again, I can turn this off and on because it's a smart object, boom. Let's just go ahead and zoom in, check that out. Really, really nice sharpening. You can turn it off at any time and I can double click right here on the unsharp mask and I can change this too. Okay, completely non-destructive. I think we've got a fantastic image. So, so cool. I think this image came out great. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to Andrew for submitting his image. Make sure to give his Instagram a big like and a follow and a heart and give him a lot of thumbs up in his comments because he's awesome. If you want to get more free tutorials from Flurn every single week, just click on that subscribe button right up there. YouTube thinks you're going to love these videos. And if you want to get even more advanced, we're talking about deep Photoshop knowledge, like retouching and compositing, check out Flurn Pro right up there. Thanks again. I'll flurn you later. Bye everyone.